Welcome to Story Time with Pastor Steve. Today's story is The Prince and the Promise. It is based on 1 Samuel chapter 20, 2 Samuel chapters 4, 5, and 9. It is written by Yvonne McCall, and it is illustrated by Art Kirchhoff. Can you see? Can you see the riders and the warriors and the horses and the poor guy laying on the ground? 22 members of the Royal Guard arrived in force as Mephobosheth Yard and galloping horses stopped and snorted. We've come to get you, the riders reported. Lame Mephobosheth couldn't run away. He was grounded, surrounded with nothing to say. The king gave orders, so come, you must. And they carried him off in a cloud of dust. He was scared, too frightened to dare say a word, for this story from years before he'd not heard. Once, David, a shepherd, met John, a prince, and they were friends, well, ever since. And then David pulled Jonathan quickly aside. Your father wants me dead, he cried. Prince Jonathan gasped. It can't be so, but what should I do? How can we know? Hide in the field for a day or two until I can see if that's really true. And I'll warn you and you can run for your life and escape and be safe from the dangers and strife. But When God has put all your enemies down and made you king with a thro throne and a crown, show kindness to me and my children, my seed, and come to our rescue in time of need. David promised, my dearest friend, I vow with a vow that will never end. Then Jonathan went to the palace to eat and sat by Saul in his usual seat. King Saul, his father, yelled at John, Where's that David? Where has he gone? For you're my son, the one to be king, not David the shepherd, the boy with the sling. For he seemed to know what God had said, that David would be the king instead. Saul, bitter and boiled with rage, he stalked like an animal locked in a cage. I command you to get him. I want him to die. But Jonathan stunned and demanded, why? Saul's eyes burned, his face was red, and he hurled a spear near Jonathan's head. If you remember from the other day, he threw a spear at David. That's why David ran away. So Jonathan found where his friend was concealed, and they sadly shook hands at the edge of the field. Cheer up, said John, and remember our oath, and God will watch and care for us both. So David fled, and the years sped by, and Saul and John eventually died. They died in battle, each was slain, and David wept with grief and pain. The news of the battle rapidly spread, and back to the palace they listened with dread. When the story of what had happened was told, Jonathan's son was five years old. A nurse was scared how well she knew their enemies might want to kill him too. She jumped up and grabbed the young boy, John's son. Her heart was thumping. She started to run, but stumbled and dropped the poor little prince, and his legs were crippled and lame ever since. She was trying to be so nice and kind. Something bad happened. Sometimes things like that's happened. But once in a field, in days long ago, David had promised his best friend, John, that Starting then and ending never, he'd be kind to John's kin forever. 
but David never heard of a boy who was five, or how he'd been crippled, but still was alive. And God made David great and strong, and the people came in a mighty throng and crowned him king, for they said, We know what the Lord God told you long ago, back when you were a boy with a sling. He said, I thank you and make you, I'll take you and make you king. For it seemed the idea that God had in mind was to give his people a king who was kind. And one day David thought of John and the promise he had made in days long gone. He called to an old-timer servant of Saul, Is anyone left in Saul's family at all? If so, I'll fulfill my vow to be kind and there are there any at all you could possibly find. Ziba the servant said, Yes, indeed, Jonathan's son is alive and in need. David sent for his son, the one who was lame, and trembling with fear, he reluctantly came from a Phobosheb, still didn't know at all if David would hate him because of Saul. No, said David, don't be afraid, for I want you, I want to fulfill a promise I made. I'll give you the land of your grandfather Saul, and Ziba will farm it, but it that isn't all. Ziba's servants were numbered twenty, and all of his sons, I know there is plenty will work on your land and so it will be but you will eat in the palace with me and all because god had made up his mind to give to his people a king who was kind god's desire for all of us is to love each other and to take care of each other that's what we need to be doing we need people who are kind kind like david even to people who are hurting especially to people who are hurting. May God bless you today.